Hey everyone! For my latest VR project, I thought it'd be fun to both learn and test how far I could push my Quest 2 using my simple flocking algorithm. Another reason why I thought this would be a great project is because Oculus announced application space warp for Quest 2 last month, which is supposed to give you a 70% boost in computational power. For this project, I thought it'd be cool to see how many flocking objects I could get on screen in VR using my basic flocking simulator. One of the key metrics that I was watching for is FPS. My main baseline goal is to maintain that 72 FPS that you need to have a comfortable VR experience in the Quest. A quick rundown on how my flocking simulator works. Each flock that spawns has a goal of moving towards a designated target, which in this case will be held by the VR player's hand. However, each flock is also trying to avoid running into flock members if they get too close. This essentially leaves each flock in a continuous movement going between moving towards the target and away from each other. My first implementation was the naive approach. Each flock member upon being spawned is fast to transform on the target and always runs a direction check and update. On top of the direction check, they also have a list of every other flock member and calculate their distance from each other every update. Simple to implement, but incredibly unperforming. This quickly tank performance once you get around 100 objects on screen. My next iteration uses spatial partition system. Uh, one of the issues with my previous implementation is that the flock is running a distance check against every other flock member in the scene. Um, it does not scale well. The idea of the spatial partition is that it would break up the space into a three-dimensional grid where the flock now only compares itself against other flock members within the same partition cell. This reduces the amount of checking that the flock has to do to determine whether it needs to separate and the direction it needs to separate from the rest of the flock if they're too close. The flock also doesn't need to check its direction and position constantly as well as not all at the same time. Instead of having every flock run its own individual update, the flock instead make a request to a request manager which then puts its request into a queue. The flock manager then dequeues the request and now manages the processing of the request for update direction and separation update methods. I also put a limit on the number of requests that can be processed per update, which allows me now to scale the amount of flock on screen while maintaining the same 72 FPS. As you can see, I'm able to now hit 500, 600 flock members while maintaining a pretty good FPS. This is a significant improvement over the 100 limit that I had before. For my next iteration, I decided to try and implement the new job system and burst compiler. Uh, the idea was that the burst compiler and drop system would be fed the distance check calculations needed to determine the direction for separation and whether the flock needs to separate. Um, basically, this computation would be spread over multiple cores using the job system and hopefully uh, improve performance. For my particular implementation and experiment, I found that the job system and burst compiler did help with having the separation calls occur more frequently, which made for better flock simulation but it didn't really help in allowing me to push the FPS and flock count um, all that much higher. For my final iteration, I use Oculus's new application space work. Um, it has strict requirements and may not work for everyone's projects. However, once I got it up and running, it did offer a big boost. Um, I was able to get up to a thousand flock on screen with no FPS drop now. I could even push it further with uh, having 1100 flocks on screen while increasing the number of flock requests processed by 50% to 150 per update. And only then did I start seeing like a small drop in FPS. Um, I do want to mention that there is a noticeable difference in visual quality. However, the fact that you can turn this on and off whenever you want during runtime means that this is still a pretty great tool for any developer in VR. <laughs>